Erupting with fury, Beirut is a city tearing itself apart. These protests are the biggest and most violent in months, with young and old gripped by anger at the authorities. It is a sign of how the explosion, which devastated more than half the capital, has galvanised a desperate population already at breaking point from deepening economic and political crises. That our government did not deploy one soldier or one policeman to help us to remove the bodies from under the rubble. Did not help us for five days, not remove one old woman from any building, any, any stone, and here they are. Makeshift gallows were constructed in Martyrs Square. Many here want to metaphorically hang the ruling elite and remove them from power. Others want them to literally swing. We gonna kill them. We wanna kill them. We want. They destroyed our Beirut. This is ours. As the gas choked through the city, a burning sense of righteous anger brought more and more people onto the streets, determined to reach the Parliament building. A symbol of the rottenness at the heart of this country. They're shouting Fowler, which means revolution. That Beirut hadn't experienced enough trauma. The city is convulsing with anger. People are furious with their government and with the authorities. Most of the people here, their apartments, their homes have been destroyed. And they want justice. Make no mistake. This is a dangerous moment for the country. Plastic bullets crackled through the air. Some of the protesters were seriously injured, with blood once again spilling onto Beirut's tired streets. An already battered people facing the full force of state security. How this ends is not yet clear, but what is certain is that no one will accept a return to the status quo. In response, the Prime Minister, Hassan Diab, made an unscheduled and brief TV appearance calling for early elections. But it's a move that's unlikely to diffuse the anger here. These people want reform of the entire system. By early evening, the protesters had taken over the foreign ministry, occupying one of the government's seats of power. The revolutionary fervour soon spilled into the main banking institution, where offices were torched and equipment was smashed. The blame, protesters say, for this hellish descent into chaos lies only with a ruling class who are accused of plundering the nation's resources. More protests are planned for the coming days, but for now, this is a city in pain that doesn't know how to heal its wounds.